Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Owning the Future of Healthcare, a health catalyst podcast. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and thank you so much for joining us on another episode of the show. We appreciate you listening along for some care industry thought leadership. As you're listening to today's conversation, make sure that you're subscribing on Apple Podcasts and Spotify and heading to our website, healthcatalyst.com. So with today's episode of the show, we're doing a quick Q&A conversation to continue some of the broader conversations we've been having on the efficient and the equitable use of data in healthcare. As we continue to see data integrated at scale in different ways across varying nations and localities across the globe, we wanted to hone in our Q&A today on the Asia Pacific region specifically, better understanding how that region is integrating and maximizing the use of their data for care purposes. So joining us to give us insights on the topic is Farhana Nakuda. She is Senior Vice President of Healthcare and Life Sciences for the Asia Pacific region at Health Catalyst. She's based out of Singapore. Farhana, thank you so much for joining us and giving us some answers today to some very important questions. I want to start broadly. Can you give us what you'd say is the current status of healthcare data and analytics usage as well as integration in the Asia Pacific region? Where is it at right now and why? So when I talk about Asia Pacific, I always like to talk about it from the perspective of developing and developed markets because you really can't generalize all of Asia Pacific being the same. So developed markets include the likes of Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, South Korea. Developing markets include the likes of India, Indonesia, Vietnam, Philippines, etc. So if I start first with developed markets, um, many of them have had EMR systems for years, which means that they at least have some data available and are ready for analytics. Having said that, some of these countries are even at varying levels of EMR adoption within a particular country, meaning that some parts of the developed market, they're completely paperless, very digital, and others, they're, they're fully paper-based. So the level of digitization is somewhat a prerequisite for how far they've gone down the analytics journey. And in the developed markets, um, they've been leveraging healthcare data and analytics for internal and external reporting purposes, regulatory reporting, um, and even for research. And some have even started down the path of leveraging data to improve health outcomes. Others are just starting to explore leveraging data for things like pop health, um, you know, automated patient safety, using triggers, um, and even more advanced use cases with machine learning and AI. Developing markets, on the other hand, they're still focused on improving their data capture systems um, because they're not fully digital, so they don't have um, they they don't all have EMR systems, and some of them are even at very early stages of just looking at you know uh, regulatory reporting um, and leveraging data so for some basic analytics. So again, one of the more common things across developed and developing markets in Asia is that they do have to share data with the government for regulatory reporting. And so in some countries, um, this is quite a digital process um, and you know more automated and others, that's still a much more manual process. Thank you for that context, Farhana. Uh, building off of that, I wanna better understand what you see as the main factor or uh, main motivating factors, plural, uh, of what is driving the interest in the adoption of data and analytics for care purposes in the Asia Pacific region? Are there specific professionals, needs, resources, technologies, really any metric that you see uh, leading the interest in adoption of data and healthcare in the Asia Pacific region? Again, uh, give us your thoughts and why. Yeah, so that's a great question. So there are really a number of things that are really driving adoption of data and analytics in healthcare in Asia Pacific. Some of these factors include a rapidly aging population, increasing demand for healthcare access. Um, again, more than half of the world's population lives in this part of the world in Asia Pacific. So you can imagine the demand um, for healthcare services. There's also a disparity um, in healthcare infrastructure and services between urban and rural areas. Um, some of the rural areas really have very limited access versus some of the urban areas. So you're seeing an increase in, for example, telemedicine um, to basically get better access. And of course, with that comes a lot of data that's coming in. 
Um, there's also limited resources, both financial and human. And so, you know, with governments, many governments, um, you know, looking at how can they basically keep healthcare costs down and, you know, moving towards capitation models, which means there's a finite number of financial resources that need to be used to provide healthcare for your population. That is actually driving a huge amount of focus on what can we do with data to identify you know, the best treatments at the lowest cost that have the best outcome. There's also a huge shortage of clinicians in this part of the world. Um, and so how can we democratize clinical expertise? How can we help provide clinical decision support leveraging data to help doctors around this region or even nurses to treat patients? And then on top of all of that, you have the pandemic with COVID-19. And that has had also a huge impact on this part of the world, just like the rest of the world. Um, but it has highlighted the importance of, of collecting data, um, you know, and for COVID-19, for example, many countries started to collect and create little mini registries on COVID to start, start to understand treatment patterns and outcomes. And so even looking at how do we prevent another outbreak like this in the future. And one of the things I wanted to highlight is that there's some differences in this part of the world between private health systems and public health systems. And so one of the things that COVID did from the private health perspective is that it actually decreased medical tourism because as you know, people couldn't travel anymore. And as a result of that, a lot of the private health systems started to show interest in how can we leverage data and analytics to start to recover some of the lost revenue that we got from no more medical tourism. And you know that's really been looking at things like patient leakage and care gaps and can we bring patients back in and there was also an interest um, to look at data monetization of some of the healthcare data they had to generate new revenue streams with pharma. On the public health side, um, you know, there's an increasing focus on providing, as I said before, the best care at the lowest cost and ultimately keeping patients out of the health system, right? So, you know, increasing healthcare costs are always a concern. And so, you know, how do we drive those costs down? Well, the best way is to keep people out of the health system. So that, of course, lends itself to things like preventative proactive programs, things like population health management, um, so that you can do early identification of patients to get them out of, um, you know, getting very sick. And then also there's a big shift on how can we start to improve hospital systems and drive efficiencies and reduce waste within the healthcare system. And as governments move towards universal health coverage and capitation models, you know, they have to do more with less so again, how do you identify waste and provide the best care at the lowest cost with the best outcome? So all of these trends are really driving an increase in the need for adoption of data and analytics in the region. So if those are the main factors driving interest, where would you say is uh, some of the most potent unrealized opportunity or opportunities for the Asia Pacific region in then leveraging that data and those analytics in healthcare. Where are they missing the mark today and why? Yeah, so again, there's so many unrealized opportunities in this part of the world. In fact, the potential is super exciting. Um, and I've shared with you already some of the areas people have started it with, but you have to understand that it is really quite early stage in this part of the world for really truly leveraging data and analytics um, to improve healthcare outcomes. So if I could give you a couple of examples, even identifying clinical variation um, and using that to reduce cost and improve quality is something fairly new in this part of the world. It start, the thing, some countries have started down this path, but again, there's a very large opportunity. And what's very interesting I find in this part of the world is that there's been a lot of interest in AI and machine learning. So you see lots of pockets of interest to do you know a machine learning algorithm to predict um you know bill size or you know predict there's always these point solutions but what i've seen that's really missing is really taking an enterprise view across a whole health system and really pulling all the data in across healthcare clinical operational financial systems and letting the system basically help you identify where are the lowest hanging fruit where is the biggest opportunity for me to improve outcomes and save costs, right? Um, and so this is actually one of the biggest areas that I've seen. Another area is even the area of patient safety, right? Because there's this whole concept of zero harm 
And, you know, a lot of that is being done today with self-reporting in this part of the world, but being able to do automated data extraction and provide triggers and, you know, basically come up with improvement plans specifically for patient safety is again, something that we haven't seen a lot of in this part of the world. Another one that's a huge opportunity is leveraging EMR data to look at activity-based costing. So, you know, most systems use averages for costing, which is not accurate at all. And as healthcare systems have to become more sustainable, they have to be able to identify and address healthcare waste in the system and reduce the total cost of care. And to do that, you have to have timely, accurate, actionable data that can basically figure out where's the unnecessary clinical variation and also look at things like supply usage and basically look at appropriate corrective action. In order to do that, you need to look at tools such as activity-based costing, um, analytics tools that can actually help you really get to the true cost of care. And that to me is another big opportunity in this part of the world. And I mentioned earlier about some are starting to go down the track of population health management. I still think that this is a very big unrealized opportunity because really that is a huge opportunity to get upstream and to basically prevent people from getting sick and, be, and do things like risk stratification, um, identify where are the care gaps in the population and ultimately keep people out of the healthcare system. So again, honestly, I could go on and on about the opportunities, but this is what I have observed as some of the big opportunities um, to leverage data and analytics in the Asia Pacific region. Farhana, thank you so much for your insights so far. Last main question I've got for you, but with all of these motivating factors, as well as unrealized opportunities in mind, what advice would you give for how healthcare organizations can remove barriers to leverage said data and analytics in healthcare? What can they do actively, both reactive and proactive, uh, to make the use and the maximization of that data simpler and more efficient? Yeah, that's a fantastic question to end our discussion with. And, you know, one of the biggest things um, healthcare organizations can do is to remove these barriers is to really increase data and analytics literacy. I really think education is needed to truly understand the power that data and analytics can bring um, and the kind of insights and outcomes that it can actually produce. And part of this education is really sharing with health systems case studies of examples from around the world of where data has been leveraged and analytics has been used to improve outcomes and this could be clinical operational financial outcomes but if you show some, if you show organizations and educate them on the power of the capability i think it's going to actually get people even more excited about the the potential the other part is really putting in place proper data governance structures, um, which can actually put guidance and structure in place on roles and responsibilities for data use and management. That to me is another very important one because again, there's a lot of worry and concern around you know, when you start to share data and you know um, who's gonna get access to data, who's responsible for what, do we need data stewards? And so again, a really good data governance structure, I think is really critical um, to basically removing the barriers to adoption. And finally, I think one of the big concerns is always data security. And you know, as you know, there's been many cyber attacks, et cetera. So having a proper data security strategy with audit trails and you know, making sure that you comply with all of the various um, security requirements from a technical perspective um, and even from an operational perspective can give people a lot of comfort that data sharing and analytics is safe and secure. And I think that is actually gonna bring a lot of excitement um, and is going to make people feel a lot more comfortable about looking at data and analytics and using that to improve health count, health, healthcare outcomes um, in the region. Farhana, thank you so much for your insights today on owning the future of healthcare. And thank you everyone for watching today's show. Again, we've been chatting with Farhana Nakuda, Senior Vice President of Healthcare and Life Sciences for the Asia Pacific region at Health Catalyst. Farhana, I'm looking forward to having you back on the program again soon. And for everyone watching, make sure you head to our website, healthcatalyst.com, as well as subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. 
for more information on these various topics and some more insights on the use of data for care purposes across the world. I'm your host, Daniel Litwin, the voice of B2B, and we'll catch you next time on Owning the Future of Healthcare.